open the lid loosen the four plastic nuts and remove the frame Install the TE-5035 top loading adapter plate. Make sure that the plastic washers are on top. Snug the plastic nuts down onto the frame. You want to tighten all four nuts up so they're snug. Install the TE5028 calibrator. Open the door up, install the TE5030 30-inch water manometer. Unplug the motor from the mass flow controller and plug the motor directly into the line circuit. You will need to let the motor warm up for approximately five minutes. Install the piece of tubing onto the calibrator. Loosen the valves up on the water manometer. Take the valve completely off and then screw it on with one thread. Do this to both of them. One valve is going to be connected to the black piece of tubing and the other valve is going to be open to the atmosphere. Zero the manometer. Connect the black piece of tubing to the manometer. Start with the knob on the calibrator turned completely counterclockwise. This will open the four holes on the bottom of the calibrator. Turn knob clockwise to get pen on or about 50 on the chart. Tapping the front of the door will settle the pen. Make sure the pen cap has been removed. You can use a straight edge screwdriver to turn the chart drive clockwise to make a mark on the chart. In our example, the first number was 50 on the chart. Then read the manometer. One side goes up and one side goes down. In our example, it went up 2.9 and it went down 2.8 for a total of 5.7. Turn the knob clockwise this time to get to a reading of about 48 on the chart. You can use the screwdriver to make the mark on the chart. In our example, we got 48 on the chart, and it went the manometer went 2.6 up and 2.6 down for a total of 5.2. Turn the knob again clockwise. to get a reading of around 46. The manometer went up 2.3 and down 2.4 for a total of 4.7. We're going to do seven points 
Although you will need five point calibration, we take a few extra points just in case we might need them for the future. Unplug the motor and replug it into the mass flow controller. Put the pen cap back on. Close the recorder door. Remove the tubing from the manometer. Close both valves on the manometer. Remove the manometer. Remove the tubing. Remove the calibrator. Close the door on the shelter. Remove the adapter plate. Install the frame. Make sure the four plastic washers are on the top. Close the lid, and this completes the calibration of the mass flow control air sampler. Go to tish-env.com, go to calibration, down to calibration worksheets, go down to TE-5170, and the Excel spreadsheet will open up. Go to enable editing, go up to the top. Put in your location. The sampler is a TE5170. You can put site and serial number in there if you would like. 
the date. You can also put in the technician. The barometric pressure at the site during calibration was 29.9 and the temperature was 69 degrees. Go down and put the serial number of your calibrator. In this instance it was 2870. Go over and put the Q standard slope of the orifice which is 1.634. Go down to the Q standard intercept which is negative 0 0.02106. The date certified is right below that. That has to be within a year. In this instance, it was September 23rd of 2016. Go over to the H2O, the manometer reading. It was 5.7 the first one, 5.2 the second one, 4.7 the third one, 4.2 the fourth one, and the last one was 3.6. Go over and put the corresponding chart readings. The first one was 50, the second was 48, the third was 46, the fourth was 44, and the last one was 42. Looking at our numbers, the slope and intercept for our machine, the correlation coefficient is greater than 0 .990, thus a good calibration. We did get all five numbers within the range for TSP, which is 39 to 60 CFM, or 1.1 to 1.7 cubic meters per minute. The next step is to figure out where we want to run the TSP air sampler at. Let's say we want to run it at 45 CFM. So we need to look at the Q standard numbers on the worksheet and find one that's close to 45 CFM. 1.276 cubic meters per minute equals 45 CFM. So looking at that number, we would go over and look at the chart number, which is 44. So, to run this at 45 CFM, we would need to set it at 44 on the chart. We now need to put a new filter on the sampler. Open the lid, loosen the four plastic nuts, and take the frame off of the filter. Get your new filter. Rough side normally goes up. Center it on the filter holder. You have to make sure that the plastic washers are on top. You have to make sure that the filter is on the filter centered. Snug the plastic nuts up by turning them clockwise, close the lid. The next step is to set the timer. Open the timer door. You need to put the on trippers when you want it to come on and the off tripper when you want it to go off. set to the correct time you have to make sure that this is plugged in right now also you need to set the recorder pen point by removing the cap turning the center hub clockwise to the correct time Turn the sampler on. As you can see the pen is going up. Now you need to set it to 44 by using the adjustment screwdriver inside the mass flow controller. You need to turn it clockwise for it to go up and counterclockwise for it to go down. Tapping on the side of the recorder will help center the pen point on the chart. Once you get it to 44, remove the pen and 
close the door of the mass flow controller. Turn the system off. Close the door of the timer. You need to close the door of the recorder. And store the pen cap for later use. Close the door of the sampler. And now you are ready to run. After the sampling schedule, you will need to collect the dirty filter and the chart and set the sampler up for the next run. Open the lid up, loosen the four plastic nuts, take the frame off, remove the dirty filter, Follow the instructions of, from the lab on how to send the filter to them. Install a new filter, rough side up. Put the frame on there, making sure that the black washers are on top of the frame. it does get a little tricky. Make sure the filter is centered on the filter holder. Tighten the plastic nuts snugly. Close the lid. Open the recorder door up to collect the chart. Install a new chart onto the recorder. Now you will need to set the timer to your next run. Remove the on and the off and put it on your next run date. Again, the on goes when you want it to come on and the off tripper goes when you want it to go off. Normally it's 24 hours. Close the timer door. Now you should be ready to run your next run. After collecting the dirty filter in the chart, you will need to go back to the calibration worksheet. The average pressure in inches of mercury was 29.50 in the 24-hour period that the filter was running. The average temperature in degrees Fahrenheit was 55. Looking at the chart, uh, you can see that the, the the pen line was between 44 and 42, so we will use an average chart reading of 43 that ran 24 hours. And these are our numbers. The total flow in cubic meters was 1,786.20, and the total flow in cubic feet was 63,070.84.